line or write a number or sound. Look at the picture and say the number or sound out loud. Use a scissors to cut on the dotted line. Look at the picture. Use these symbols for the lesson of the day, which will be allocated at the top right side of each page. For example, lesson one, prepositions and directions. Hello and welcome to my zone online school. My name is Teacher Mutsa and thank you so much for joining me today. Our theme this week is travel. And before we get into today's lesson, we must sanitize our hands. Remember, it's also important to wear a mask every time you go outside as well. And when you sanitize your hands, Make sure you dry them before you touch anything else. It's also very important for you to check your social distancing by checking the sides, if you're touching anyone, or in front of you. Well done. Our theme, or rather our lesson today, is modes of transport. <laughs> Our first exercise is on page 7. Here we can see that there is a boy who needs our help. He seems a little confused. So we are going to help him to find the car, the helicopter and the aeroplane. I want you to use your eyes and point to the car. Let's look for the car. Remember, a car has wheels. It has a steering wheel and it's got lights in front. Can you see something that looks like a car? Yes, well done. That is the car. I'd like you to color in the car. The next thing we need to help the boy find is the helicopter. Remember, a helicopter has a big screen and a propeller at the top that goes round and round. Can you see something that looks like a helicopter? Yes, very good. That is the helicopter. I would like you to please color in the helicopter. The last thing that we need to help the boy look for is the aeroplane. Now remember, an aeroplane has two wings and the front where the pilot sits. Can you see an aeroplane? Well done! You can see an aeroplane. That is great. Good job. I would also like you to color in the aeroplane. So we helped the boy find the car, the helicopter, and the aeroplane. Remember, these are all ways that people travel from one place to another. And when you are coloring in, make sure you don't color in anything else except those three things. Otherwise, it's no longer something that we use to travel. And by doing that, we make our friend, the little boy, very happy. Enjoy yourselves and be very careful when you're coloring. Now let's move on to something exciting. Let's turn to the next page, page 8. On page 8, we have all sorts of pictures that are there. Our job is to find and color the transport pictures. Now I know for some of you these will be easy, but let's take a look at all the pictures that are there. Remember, transport or Travel is something that you can use to move from one place and going to another place. Can you use a bucket to get to town? No, we can't. So please don't color the bucket. How about 
an aeroplane to move from one city and go to another one. Yes, so you are going to color the aeroplane. Can you use a house to go to town? No, you can't use a house to go to town. So please do not color the house. Can you ride a bicycle to your friend's house? Yes, you can ride a bicycle to go to your friend's house. So you are going to color the bicycle. How about a tree? Can you use a tree to go to school? No, you can't use a tree to go to school. So we are not going to color the tree. Can you use a banana to go to mommy or daddy's workplace? <laughs> no, you can't. But you can use a tractor to move around the farm. So you are going to color the tractor. How about a toy hippo? Can you use a toy hippo to move around? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Even a real hippo wouldn't allow you to, to ride on his back. <laughs> can you use a truck? Yes, you can. In fact, a truck is what we use to move things from one place to another. You are going to color the aeroplane, the bicycle, the tractor, and the truck. Please make sure that when you color, you stay within the lines and it looks very beautiful. Now let's go to page nine. On page nine, we have a beautiful aeroplane. An aeroplane travels up in the sky. You can see that this one is very happy because he is smiling. And I think he's going somewhere very important. Your job is to color the aeroplane. And I want you to use different colors. Don't use blue everywhere. Don't leave the aeroplane white as well. I want you to take colors and use them on different parts of the aeroplane. Like the aeroplane's eyes can be a different color from the aeroplane's nose. And the plane, aeroplane can also have different colored wings. Make sure that when you are coloring that you're staying within the lines. And I hope you have fun coloring the aeroplane as well. Let's move to page 10. On page 10, we also have something that moves in the sky, but it doesn't have a lot of people like the aeroplane. An aeroplane can carry many, many people, but a helicopter can carry maybe five or six people. You can see that this helicopter has its propellers up there on top of its head. Just like the aeroplane, I would like you to color this one in different colors as well. Make sure that you use more than five colors and make it as bright as possible so that you can also remember that the airplane and the helicopters are the types or modes of transport that move around in the sky. Enjoy yourselves, my children. This has been a wonderful lesson, my children. I hope you enjoyed learning about the different types of transport and modes of transport as well. Now that we are done with our lesson, it's very important to sanitize. And remember, when you sanitize, we must make sure you cover all of your hands and your wrists as well. And make sure the sanitizer is dry before you touch anything else. It's also important to check our social distancing. So you check by your sides and in front of you as well. Well done. I wonder, I haven't seen our friend today. Maybe she's on a plane. Zoe, are you here? There she is. So from Zoe and I, we would like to say goodbye. <laughs>
ShopRite has always been here for you, and our promise to bring you low prices on what you need most will never change. Get a 700 ml bottle of all gold tomato sauce, only $26.99, and 750 grams of Cross and Blackwell tangy mayonnaise, just $24.99, only at ShopRite. Explanation of symbols on worksheets are as follows. Use coloring crayons to color the picture. Use your finger to follow the track or line or show the correct picture. Use a coloring crayon to draw a line or write a number or sound. Look at the picture and say the number or sound out loud. Use a scissors to cut on the dotted line. Look at the picture. Use these symbols for the lesson of the day, which will be allocated at the top right side of each page. For example, lesson one, Prepositions and Directions. Hello and welcome to My Zone Online School. My name is Teacher Mutza and thank you so much for joining me. Our theme this week has been travel. And before we get into our lesson, it is very important for us to sanitize. Remember, when you are sanitizing, you have to sanitize all of your hand, inside, in between, round and round, and on the wrists. Make sure that your hand is dry or your hands are dry before you touch anything else. It's very important for us to also check our social distancing, and we do that by checking our sides and in front of us. Well done. Our topic this for this lesson is the letter V and G and handwriting. For our first exercise today, please can you turn to page 11. On this page, we are being introduced to a new letter. The name of the letter is V. And the sound that it makes is v. Let's all say v. Again, v. One more time, v. Well done. So we are going to try and draw the letter V to write it. As you can see, we start on the dot and we go down. And without lifting our pencil, we come back up. Very good. I want you to try with your finger. Let's start at the top. Down. And without lifting your finger, go up. Very good. Make sure that where you start your V is the same spot where you end it. They need to be on the same level. You're going to practice writing the letter V in the blocks. Let's take a look at the board. Now, there are many, many different words that start with V. For example, we have vase. This is a type of vase. And with this vase, you can put anything in it. For example, you can put water and you can put a beautiful flower in the vase. And a vase can come in different shapes. For example, this is also a vase. You can put more flowers and maybe even marbles in this vase as well. Other words that start with V are van. The van that we use to travel. Yes, some of you actually go to school in a van sometimes. And then the one that we all know and I hope we love eating is vegetables. Now, I love broccoli. That is my favorite vegetable. 
And I wonder what your favorite vegetable is. I want you to tell the person at home what your favorite vegetable is. And remember, vegetables are very good for our health. I would like you to complete this exercise by yourself. Take your time and make sure that when you're writing the word V, the letter V, and making the sound V, that your lines are nice and straight. Enjoy yourselves. Our next exercise is also another letter. Let us turn to page 12. On page 12, we can see a beautiful letter with many, many curves. This letter is called the letter G. And when it makes its sound, it goes like this. G. G. Let's all say G. Well done. Again, G. Yes. So, the name of the letter is G, and the sound that it makes is G. As you can see, we have a goat, because it starts with the letter G. And your job is to write the letter G in the blocks below. Let's take a look at the board. On the board, we have the big letter G and the small letter G. Now, they are written differently, but today we want to focus on the small letter G. This is the one that we are going to learn how to write. If you look in your booklets, the small letter G in your booklets starts at the top and it goes round, up and down with the curve. I want you to take your finger. Well done. And you're going to go round, up, and curve. Very good. Now let's try it on the board. I have my chalk. You have your uh, finger. And we're going to start. We start here at the top, remember? And we're going to go round. Up and curve. And there you go. That is my G. We can't really see it yet because the chalk is a little wet, but it's going to appear. Now, as you can see, for the letter G, it likes to sit halfway of the line. So the head of the letter G is sitting on the line. And then the letter G likes to hang its legs just over. There are many, many words that have G or the letter G. Remember, the sound that the letter G makes is G. For example, glass. You can see that it is at the beginning of the word glass. There is also another word. For example, girl. So let us try again to draw the letter G. Are we ready? Round, up, and down. And remember when you're drawing your letter G, you must make sure that the head and the feet are in the same line or position. She can't have her legs in front of her and she can't have her head there in front of the legs. Take your time when you're doing this exercise and I know that you're going to have fun. Do you know any more words that start with G? I want you to tell the people at home all the words that start with G. Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> Our next exercise is going to be very fun, but it is, it is going to need you to be calm and take it slow. Let's look at page 13. On page 13, we have a handwriting exercise, and it is your job to get the horse to the stable, the plane to the hangar, and the rabbit to the tree. You're going to do these patterns 
But the trick is not to lift your hand. So I want you to first try it with your finger. And I want you to say it as you go. As you can see, each pattern is very different. For the horse, it goes round, down, and you have to come back up without lifting your pencil. Let's take a look at the board. On the board, I have a similar pattern for you. And I'm going to do this pattern with you at home right now. But I would like you to use your finger and do it in your book. So we are starting here. Do you have your finger there? Well done. And we're going to go round, down, then without lifting our pencil, go back up in a straight line and round again, down. Remember, we're not lifting our pencil. Go back up and round and down. Keeping our pencil there, go back up until the pattern is done. If you need to stop, make sure that you don't lift your pencil. Otherwise, the pattern will be wrong. Down, you go back up and make sure that you're within the lines of the pattern. Down, go back up, very good, and down. And I have finished my pattern. I hope you have finished yours too. So remember, you're not allowed to lift up your pencil. Let's take a look at the next one. The next one has the aeroplane and it is going, starting from the bottom, going round in a loop and down and round in a loop again, going up and down. We're going to try a similar pattern on the board. So you start with your finger, remember, and I will do it with my chalk here on the board. And remember, when you're doing it, it's very easy for you if you say it. So let's start here. We're going up, round, and down without lifting your pencil. Up, round, take your time when you're going round, and down. Very good. Up, round, and down. Well done. Remember, it's very important not to lift up your pencil and to make the lines meet the trace line as well. Up, round, and down. And the last one, up, round, and down. So this was the second pattern. Remember when you're doing this, when you're going round, it's okay to stop or take your time or slow down, but it is not okay to lift up your pencil. Let's take a look at the last pattern. Now the last pattern, I know you know it very well. It is the zigzag pattern. This is the one that the rabbit is going to use to get to the tree. So we are going to try the pattern, you with your finger on your paper and me on the board with my chalk. So we're going to start by going up and down. Up and down. Remember, you're not allowed to lift up your pencil. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. So this is the last one that we're going to do. Make sure that you don't lift up your pencil. I want you to concentrate and I want you to look carefully at the pattern. If you need to take it slow, then slow down. And remember, it's made easier if you say what you are doing. Enjoy yourselves and make sure your work is neat. I really
really do hope that you took your time when you were doing your handwriting exercise. Remember, it's very important not to lift up your pencil and to take your time. Let's take a look at our next exercise on page 14. On page 14, we can see that there is a group of friends who want to meet and there is a path that they need to follow. You're going to first use your finger to tra track the path that they need to use. Remember, it's very important not to take closed roads or roads that are blocked. And once you are done with that with your pencil, you are free to color that page. And remember, when you are tracing with your pencil, it's also very important not to lift up your pencil. This will be the last exercise that we will do for today. I hope you really enjoyed this lesson. And remember, when we are sanitizing our hands, we need to make sure that we go inside our hands, outside our hands, in between, round and round on our wrists as well. And make sure that your hands are dry before you touch anything. It's also very important for you to check your social distancing by checking beside you and in front of you to make sure you're not touching anyone or anything. Zoe told me that she had gone out of space in a rocket. So I wonder if she's back. Zoe, are you here? Oh, there she is. How was out of space? I'm sure you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> So, from Zoe and I, we would like to say bye!